both up. What's up, everybody? Hey. Hey, 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 hey. All right, I don't well, know how much. I don't I, know how much I like those close-ups. No, I'm not a. I'm a zero fan, man. Oh, <laughs> no, never a close-up that close-up for me ever. Please, God. <laughs> man, welcome to the real boys. Three of us right now. Uh, I'm Chris Harvey, the host of the episode, and we got Michael Kobe and Phil Better with us. What is up? What is up? Hey. hey. Bitter okay. enemies and bitter rivals on the podcast. <laughs> true, that is true. The three of us. Uh, we are talking hey, Tina. Forrest Gump. Oh, what's up, Tina? Hey, uh, we we're talking about Forrest Gump, the best movie ever. Well, well that I'm going to disagree with that. <laughs> uh, but that once, is- I think me and Michael will be on the same side. I see. I that's the thing about this movie. I'm not on a side here. Um, I, I am very neutral on this movie, um, and we'll get into why. Of course, because I'm actually very high on one part of it, but mm. the rest of it, I'm very low on. <laughs> okay. Okay. What are you, Phil? What do you think? <sighs> When it first came out, I was like, oh, cool. I was buying the hype. I'm like, this is a cool movie. Oh, my God. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Because Tom Hanks is like fucking Tom Hanks, right? Rewatching it, I'm like, my God, this movie takes forever. And how the hell is this one person connected to so many fucking uh, big monumental events? Like, this is like, this is not possible. Like, one person being connected to maybe one or two events but like he's connected to every single huge major event in his lifetime. And it's like, come on. I know a lot of old people and they're not that connected either. That's what makes it a beautiful story. Uh, it is, it is so unrealistically realistic. <laughs> um, and also You're I don't... just throwing words together now. <laughs> hey, now it's a, it's a long movie. But it does move fast. There's a lot of cutscenes. There's a lot of it's quick moving. It's not like oh he was a kid for for 40 minutes and it wasn't like he was in the military for 40 minutes. It was it moves a lot of different areas. Um, and it, it like I have notes and it's I have to scroll a lot with how many different cutscenes it goes to. Um, so it's not like it's stuck on one thing where you're like oh you could have cut that whole thing. I'm sure there's a lot of things that could have been cut to make it a shorter movie. But it did make it an all-around character that made this uh, the movie that it was. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> you're right. This movie, it does go all sorts of places. Um, but somehow it also drags. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but like the, the movie starts off with following this feather... Mm-hmm. which sort of sums up how the entire movie goes. It's <laughs> focused in on nothing for a long time. Um, this this feather, they make it seem like it's a big, important part of the story. He puts it in, you know, they follow it for a long time. He puts it into the book and he's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, whatever, save this or whatever. And then even when he pulls the book back out, it just sort of falls out of the book and then it's just gone. And who can like it it just it focuses in on a lot of stuff that doesn't really matter. That's is my me- problem. <laughs> it's a deep message behind that. Oh, please, please. I want to know what the deep message is. Please enlighten me, Chris. I want to know what the deep message is. Things flow and they sometimes mean something, and sometimes they don't. It just happens. Uh, <laughs> as we get into that, that uh, is the most surface level, <laughs> deep wannabe meaning I have ever heard in my goddamn life. This movie is it is the perfect amount of comedic writing with deepness behind it. Like there's a there's a this is a comedic. I laughed during this whole movie. 
Because this, wait, hold on. Are we watching the same Forrest Gump? <laughs> we were not watching. We were not watching a comedy. If you were watching a comedy, I, I don't know why I spent two hours and 22 minutes watching the movie that I did. <laughs> a dramatic comedy movie where it has so much um, story and, and setup that the punchline, that's why there's so much, there's a lot of callbacks in this movie and a lot of, you guys obviously aren't comedic writers. Uh, as a stand-up comedian who writes, there's so much setup to the jokes. Like, um, and I don't want to give away too much, but there's so many things that set up something that's going to come later, or just little things that become funny. Uh, I laugh more in this than any comedy movie we've had on the sub show. This is a comedic. If you watch this as a comedic view, it's a comedic movie. Real quick, just so people know, we're watching the Forrest Gump. Uh, it was made. It was released the July 6, 1994, which was the day I was supposed to be born. I was born on June 24th. That's why this movie is uh, really important. Uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Uh, screenplay by Eric Roth. 24 total awards, including six Academy Awards. Uh, based on the novel, 1986, written by Winston Groom. The budget was $55 million, and it grossed in box office. Six hundred and eighty-three million dollars. Yes, that is why it is my number four favorite movie. I'm uh, still, I'm still flabbergasted that you find it a com a comedic movie. <laughs> I'm still in that range. Like, yeah, like the accomplishments it's made. Like, yes, uh, at the time it was a like it it revolutionized the blockbuster genre with what it's done with the uh, awards and made Tom Hanks. Tom fucking Hanks, you know, that and Saving Private Ryan. But I, I can still not see how you see comedy in this. Yes, there is a comedic to moment or two with him being talking about the shrimp and oh, going man. back to Bubba Shrimp, Bubba Shrimp, Bubba Shrimp, and that military. And like, yeah, you can kind of, and they've made the meme clips and all that, but I, I, I've seen a lot of movies. I've watched a lot of stand-up. I'm again. I'm not saying I'm anywhere close to a comedic stand-up comedian. I have the chance of saying funny fucking shit once in a while. I stumble upon that, but I'm still trying to figure out how the hell you got callback for comedy in this. This is uh, uh, is one of those movies that could fit in either genre. It is two hours of really good writing. Uh, and we can start with the beginning of where they, they're at the bench and Forrest Gump is sitting there and the flower comes down. Who, who was talking about that? The, the, the feather. Uh, yeah, that was me. That's what starts the the, the, uh, the bench talk of us meeting Forrest for the first time, which that in alone is just a funny little thing because she obviously does not care about anything he said. Yeah, I feel for this woman so much because all she wants to do is read her magazine and this guy will not shut up no matter what she's doing she is obviously not interested in what he's saying but he will not stop talking and i could not i could i couldn't I, like i felt so bad for this woman because i am that lady like <laughs> if i'm out in public Don't i do me. everything i can i'm wearing these headphones my noise canceling headphones i've got them plugged in I'm listening to something because I do not want to talk to you if I'm in public. And then I still have people who come up to me and just want to start bullshitting. And it's like, I don't want to talk to you, stranger. Will you shut up? And they won't shut up. And Forrest Gump does not shut up. And she gets on the bus and he has not shut up. <laughs> and I like, I, I was irritated by Forrest Gump the character from that scene from her from him not being able to let her live her life but it, it also adds this like beautiful moment of of back then there was no phones and it, it takes you back to then where it was that was all you really had was conversation with somebody else it was or the magazine that you're trying to read listen <laughs> we grew up in that time. It was not a fun time. No, it you wasn't a fun we were time. Being able to be distracted because then you had to deal with those weird, awkward conversations with that stranger at the bus that you don't know 
if he's fully there or not, and you don't know what he's going to do or she's going to do to you. Like, we but, had to live through that. But that's the whole point of the movie is, is you're judging someone by who they are, what they appear to be, and it's judging a book by its cover because of what he ends up being in the end, of who he actually is. So you're admitting Who like is he at the end? Because as far as I can tell, there are... Okay, there is a thing that I call great the great gatsby syndrome okay. where there is an interesting story to be told in the movie or like book that we're reading but we're not telling that story we are telling the most boring version of what's going on um and that's what's happening in forrest gump Forrest Gump is one of the least interesting movie characters I've ever seen. And we have um, Lieutenant Dan, mm -hmm. whose story is very interesting. We've got Jenny, whose tragic story could be a very interesting story that we could be hearing. But instead, we're hearing about this guy who's just dumb and stumbles into situations and he has zero character arc through the whole thing. He's the same person in the beginning that he is at the end. He hasn't learned anything. He hasn't grown any. It, it just, there's, and there's interesting stuff in this movie. There's powerful stuff in this movie in the last 45 minutes after you're already so goddamn bored by the rest of this movie that you almost don't care. But how, okay, so how is he not an interesting character off of everything that has, that goes through, um, that he, so for to be this failure, this dumb kid who couldn't, who had a- Because he just happens to be at the right place yeah, at the he's, right time. He's not it's a not failure like... at all. He never fails at anything. He succeeds at everything that he does. So everyone looks at the whole idea of it is that everyone looks at him as someone that that's different or that is it that's stupid or this and that and he's able to succeed off of um everyone even though everyone can insult say Look, I, get, I get the story that they're trying to tell that it's like don't judge a book by its cover see how that's a boring story though off, off of off of everything he does and the the inner crop that's still an interesting story to hear if if, if that's a story mm -hmm. It, it's it's not though because he doesn't have any character development at all. I don't care. There's about nothing. The he's at a all. he's he's a dumb guy that stumbles into success at everything that he does. Like for fuck's sakes, he runs for like a good twenty minutes in the movie for no reason, and they literally ask him, "Why are you running?" I just want to run. Like yeah. why? What? Like he got fame. It, it just shows how people are getting famous over the dumbest stuff nowadays and it was true as true now as it was back then like he was running for no reason like we're gonna catch up to this guy who's running for no reason like there's no point to it like what's th that's not an interest i don't care that some guy ran and i interview people for why they're becoming entrepreneurs that's interesting not guy just ran had a happy stance of this crazy thing i'll read him maybe i'll read a book but the, there's nothing redeeming about this character. There's no character development. He's the same guy at the beginning and at the end throughout the whole thing. Shit just happens to him, and he just goes, well, I'm going to tell a story about it, and tells a story about it. Like, there's no... He doesn't learn from any of these. But why is that... Why does it have to be... Every movie has a character arc. Why does the one movie... Okay, so even if he doesn't, because I, I do think there is developments through him and things he does. They might not be huge or um, have a big explanation point around him, but I think there's definitely growth in different things that he does throughout the movie. But why does that matter so much? Why does it matter that the character that we're watching, you know, all the characters, you named Lieutenant Dan being super interesting, and Jenny, you're calling this a complete, like, oh, this movie's boring, but you had parts and peaks of those, and that's what this movie was, was yeah. a character that's here that has characters going all around him, like up and down, and that's what makes it an interesting movie. Nope. That's, how, that's 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 what makes it that's what makes it a not interesting movie because we only get peaks of the interesting characters. 
I want to follow like, an interesting character. I want to find out more about what happens with Lieutenant Dan. I want to she, find out more about what the fuck, how did Jenny end up getting AIDS? Yes, she's apparently slept around with a thousand people, but is there something specific in that instance that she got? And maybe it was a heroin needle. Who knows? That's what I'm interested in. All we get with Forrest Gump is this guy just signs up, ends up running one day because he was being made fun of, keeps running, ends up teaching the, the, uh, the king of all people, how to do the swing, like it's a movie, and so it's 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 all you guys, man. You guys don't know how to watch a movie. That's what it is, because it's so it's so much more than just what you're making. You're like, oh, he just ran, and it was. You know what's funny is we bring up these points on movies that we like. No, and then he goes, you, you're you're doing it wrong. You're not reviewing it properly. You have to yeah. review it like this. <laughs> You guys, and we review it like how he tells us to review it, and then he's like, "No, no, you're not watching the movie right." Then all these things, because you guys try to find these. Oh, it has to have this to make it all smart, but like you don't look at the beauty in a movie of what what they were doing. Of the reason he was running for was for a reason. He had just lost his mother. He had lost his friend in war. He did all this stuff, and he, mostly that'd be successful. That'd be like, "Oh man, I'm a millionaire. I have all this money." And then the woman he loves comes rejects him pretty much where he doesn't get married and then just leaves. So most people would have a midlife crisis. They, they get depressed. They do things. So he just started running. There was no reason for it. There's, we all have our own little binges of what we do where, I, you know, maybe you overeat or maybe you over drink or maybe you do this. His was running. And so he ran because that's what he was good at as a kid. So to say, oh, he was just running. It's not that. So you're taking these little moments that were supposed to be I inspiring and you're making them sound like they were just boring. But that was his character arc. Because he was, and, and I don't think he was just a dumb person, but back then, just like how they couldn't, um, they couldn't uh, diagnose that she had AIDS in the movie because she just says she's sick. Um, he might have had autism. He might have had those other things that they didn't diagnose. So this isn't just a dumb person. This is someone who had a lot of adversary in his life, and he's doing all these things. And it's, it's supposed to show you, it's supposed to be an inspiring movie that has comedic points. And the reason why you have multiple characters like that is to show different points and peaks of how life goes and that, that that's what the whole movie was to call it boring is kind of uh insulting uh, i see i'm not with phil on the running that's when i think the movie gets good after jenny leaves that time and he starts running the running part not necessarily the most interesting part but after that you know, when she comes back and, and all of that stuff happens, that's the, the ultimate like payoff for like the emotional stuff all happens in that last 45 minutes when he comes back and he's at the, you know, he's at the thing and Jenny comes back and then, you know, she, he finds out that he has a son and then they get married and all that stuff. You know, you see him, crying at the grave the first time that he shows any sort of emotion. And I agree, Chris, uh, he's definitely, he's definitely autistic. Um, that's not, I don't think a he's on the spectrum for sure. Yeah. No one. Questions yeah. And that. that's, I mean, that's whatever, but I get what you're saying. But up until then, we have a lot of stuff that's happening for no reason. And I think that it is the way that the movie's set up, I do believe is to set up that last 45 minutes to pay everything off. Um, you know, Jenny coming back because she really does. I mean, throughout the whole movie, you can tell that Jenny does love Forrest. Like that's not, but she's trying to protect him, not only from the bullies, not only from the other people, but also from her because she knows that she's damaged because she grew up being molested by her father. Um, she has all sorts of tragedies in her life. And then when she's finally able to sort of come to terms with herself that's when she comes back and settles down with Forrest. Unfortunately for her, it's too late because she's dying. And all of that stuff is very powerful. At the end of that movie, 
I was like, I was emotional when, when Jenny died and you see him standing there, you know, you see like Forrest Jr.'s first day of kindergarten or whatever, you know, when Forrest asks Jenny if he's smart or if he's like me, like that's, that's emotional payoff right there. Unfortunately, we've been watching this movie for an hour and 45 minutes before that stuff starts happening. And up until then, it, it, the movie drags. I'm sorry, but yeah, it, it, <laughs> the it, movie it loses its payoff. It's, it, it doesn't, to me, it's like, I don't care. See like what, what you guys want in movies then, because there's so much entertaining things in my opinion in this of, of just from, I, first off, I love the the whole storytelling part of that he's at a bench and he's telling a story. I don't mind that. That was a, I like that ingenuity. So I find that kind. Of, so like first off with the break, like so like I had wrote down every like points of every scene that like in my opinion was like either entertaining or had a moment in it. So obviously when he starts uh, in the movie, he's he's talking about the lady's shoes, and that is the whole you know it has a, a oh my mom said that shoe, you could tell by how someone's life was by the shoes they wear. And then the whole movie has clips of different people's shoes throughout the movie. And I think that this is little things like that that catches, oh, he's walking in these shoes. You know what I'm saying? That's a big thing. That's why at the end of the movie, she gets him the shoes. You know what I'm saying? The best gift you can ever buy is someone a brand new pair of shoes. Um, so it's just like little things. That's why I said I love this movie for the callbacks, for the – it it brings it full circle a lot, like the feather. It brings it brings things from the beginning to the end and makes everything make sense. It's, you're not leaving this movie going, ah, I don't get it. Or you're not leaving going, oh, nothing was answered because there's no questions at the end of the movie. Jenny died of AIDS. The mom died of cancer. The kid is Forrest's. There's not like an ultimate question of like what happened in the movie. You know everything that happened. Yeah, and now to Phil's point... <laughs> Uh -oh. When we were talking about the Big Lebowski, you're like, "Oh, this movie's boring," but that shit moved. Much that shit quicker. moved like lightning. That like everything that happened in that movie. And then you're saying we're wrong for thinking Forrest Gump is a boring movie. And even though I don't dislike Forrest Gump, this thing does not move. This thing is a slow paced movie. It move so many different scenes so fast and like the big Lebowski there was times it doesn't, where it doesn't matter sometimes jumping from scene to scene isn't important like big Lebowski has like like four or five sets and they're set those are where you are for the whole movie so you're enveloped in this world you understand when you see something specific from that set you know okay we're at the the rich Lebowski's house or we're at the dude's house because you see the carpet or you see the bowling pin comes up, you're like, okay, these are the people I'm expecting because I can expect this comedic moment because you got Jesus there, you know? Those are what sometimes you get those those short, small scene movies that only have one or two or three scenes that happen. Whereas you have the you have a movie like Forrest Gump where you have like 45 different scenes and you're like, I don't need to know this whole guy's life. Like, how did he end up going from, you know, playing some college football, going to the army, and then you're running this billion dollar ship operation, meeting the Kennedy, and then saying the funny line, I have to pay uh, to, with the president. Like, like, you don't know anyone that has had this life. And if you did, you would hear about it already. Like we would know someone like that if it was based on some reality. And because <laughs> we haven't had anybody have all these crazy things happen to them, it's hard to connect with the lessons they're trying to teach. It's just maybe stories that have not been told. Not saying that it is, but it's not like that's not like my life is crazy. I've done a ton of things that no one would expect. You know what I'm saying? So, Everyone has these life experiences, and his just happened to be that everybody knows of, of where he did things that. But you don't know it, it, things like this could happen. Everyone's life is different, so is that way. Well, if if they had this, the, the like, look at the peaks that he had in his life. Okay, he uh, he won. I, didn't he win something in in college for football or something for running? Everyone else gets to do the episode where they read off of like how everything is. And, you guys are, aren't letting me do it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I apologize. I apologize. Have your real boys experience. <laughs> well, we start here and then we move down the movie. You guys are like, fuck Forrest Gump. You aren't even oh, Well, we 
See, you've been you've been off the show for so long. This is this is what the show has become. We haven't been doing scene by scene for a while. But if that's what you want to do, back, you are the host back. of this episode. Yeah. You do it. A little bit of it is because of how many things happen. And this is where like I wrote down like the things of like what is funny of why it why so like first off of like him not being able to go to school. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell him, tell him what it is. Tell him, producer. Tell him, tell him, producer Dylan. Start off with a mom who who knows that her son is has issues, um, and wants nothing but norm normal life for him, and fights for everything. And this is this is something that you know I I think I have a connection with Forrest Gump. Maybe that's why I care so much. Is because I did drop out of high school at fifteen. I was set up as the failure. My mom did everything she could as a single mother who was poor. And we we lived with people and and she you know we didn't have our own house we were homeless so things like that like that kind of stuff not similar but enough to where it's like oh no I know how it feels to not be looked at as someone so anyway the principal the whole principal thing that to me was funny because it took me I watched it as a kid you don't realize what's happening you don't realize that she's having sex with the principal so that he can get into school. And so the whole uh, when he comes out and the principal goes, your mother really loves you. You don't talk much. He's like, e, 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 e. That's a hilarious part to me. You guys don't laugh at that? That's not funny? No. Nope. It's just to me, I see it. Like when I saw it as a kid, I probably did. It, it went over my head. Now I look at it. Another proof of abuse of what's wrong with the society. That's how I saw it. Yeah, that part of, of him using his power for sex, but the part of that four is the only thing he said, even though he could talk fine, was the moaning of it. Of that, that you could obviously tell he didn't like that the person. Um, and then it cuts to the very next scene of Elvis Presley, of him living in the same house. That's the very next scene. That to me is what's funny about the movie is where it goes. It doesn't stay onto one scene. It doesn't hold and drag this bit out or this thing that they have out so long that you get bored by it it moves really fast in the difference so you guys didn't like the elvis presley it, it to me it didn't add anything to the story like what's the point of it to it like it didn't add anything to my enjoyment of this movie like it could have been cut and i would have been fine with it i wish we had other people on the show because you guys <laughs> Yeah, the stuff the stuff that I liked least about this movie was the, you know, the Elvis stuff and the uh I can't even think of who the other but like all of the like all the president stuff, like all the stuff with the famous people, you know, where he invents the smiley face t-shirt, you know, where he invents the the saying shit happens like uh, that was my least favorite stuff that was in this movie. Like I liked, I liked him interacting with the people. Like when he's with Jenny, that stuff is interesting. When he's interacting with uh, Lieutenant Dan, when he's interacting with Bubba, that stuff is good. The rest of the stuff, I guess it just, I guess it was just because it drew out the movie a lot longer and that's what, like, because the stuff that I was interested in was just so far in between. I wanted more. I wanted more of Forrest interacting with people. Maybe that would have. Because when he is interacting with them, it's very good. And at the end, like I said, the last 45 minutes of this movie is fucking great i like i really enjoy the last from when he starts running until the end of this movie i'm emotionally invested up until that it's just this guy just like i said stumbling into success for no reason and it's it's obnoxious <laughs> I, I i i like those parts because to me it adds this idea of inspiration could come from anything. It come from the kid that has um, braces on his legs that can't walk, that created the most, you know, one of the most uh, known walks in, in music, you know what I'm saying? So, and then and then even uh, what was 
the the smiley face. It was just him. It, anything you would get inspiration from anything, and that's yeah. what I like the idea of. Um, that's why I thought all those parts were very important. Is because yeah, you guys say there's no character arc in this person, but they're finding inspiration in this character who doesn't really care about anything. He all he cares about is Jenny and his mom, and he have he doesn't care if he makes a million dollars. He doesn't care if if he's famous. He doesn't care about none of that stuff. And I think we get so wrapped up in that nowadays as people that it's so dope to see a character that doesn't care about anything but what he's doing. Of, yeah. of his, and of promises and and all that stuff and protecting. Yeah, and that also takes away from the from the people that we're seeing. Like when Forrest invents Elvis's dance, that's taking away that accomplishment from Elvis. When we see the when we see Forrest invent the smiley face, we're taking that achievement away from the guy who actually invented the smiley face thing. Like all of the stuff that is just it just happens because this guy who doesn't care that he's doing this stuff is just doing it. And then, you know, oh, like, the artist that actually did that, it's like, oh, no, it wasn't. It was just it gets lost in folklore history. Yeah, it was just some guy who, the same guy. Well, I, I don't know. I've never seen anything like that anyway. Like where, where in my, like, as if, someone. If, if I may for just a quick thing, like this I, movie would have been like, I enjoy, like Mike was saying, I enjoyed the parts where he was with Bubba, where he was with Lieutenant Dan, when he was with Jenny, some of the parts with his mom, like I enjoyed those parts. Like it's like when he was a child, like seeing a bit of his childhood. Yeah, that's important because it sets up who he is later on in life. So I, maybe Elvis was okay, kind of like, oh yeah, it was cute that he saw Elvis. But if they stayed on his life, where him building the shrimp business, you know, after the devastation and like had none of the political stuff, had none of the famous stuff, none of the running and like just kept it to here's here's this guy whose intelligence has been questioned his whole life. He survived a war, came out with this great idea for shrimp, ran this empire and then, you know, ended up working with this surly old pissed off, you know, veteran that we're, we, we all know one veteran like that, that surly veteran who may or may not be injured and then become a, becomes a billionaire and then has the love of his life from his childhood, which we, we know come back. I think that would have been a better story and I would have enjoyed it more that, that there is that story there. But like you said, if they've cut, cut out most of the extra fat that what isn't needed, I would have been, it would have cut the movie down to two hours. And I think I would have enjoyed that movie way better. And you would have got the emotional punch afterwards. This is a, co there's comedic parts in this movie. It's, it's a, it's, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need those comedic. If you're looking at those celebrity moments as comedic points, this is not a movie. I was not sold this as a comedic movie. I was sold this as a, a drama or at least a semi autobiographical moment. And I think you could have added those funnier moments when it was related to, you know, him building his billionaire shrimp empire. It was the, the whole idea is those characters that is with him, Forrest Gump is the comedic tone. And all the characters around him are the serious tones. Um, lieutenant Dan is this serious lieutenant who is supposed to die in battle. Jenny is this, this woman who um, grew up through um, child abuse and is now a heroin addict that's trying to look for fame. Uh, Bubba, Bubba was a character who... Um, his family was enslaved and working um, like that. And so that's why he had to do that industry. It was drafted when Forrest chose to go into the army and he was drafted. These are serious tones around him and he was the comedic tone. That's the whole point of why the movie was like that. And and that's, that's if you cut all that out, it doesn't make sense. It would just be a, a very dramatic movie that it w wouldn't have made $600 million. Yes, it, it would have been a very good one hour and 50 minute movie, and we wouldn't have been using a handicapped person as the comedic foil in in a movie. We would have watched a very, we would have watched very dramatic and like intense scenes. And if Forrest was the one tying that stuff together, great. But the the celebrity stuff was all just just added fluff that didn't that didn't give anything to the movie. It 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 really didn't. And that scene, 
like um like was just up on screen that scene with LBJ, LBJ yeah. um and he moons him like it, that thing felt so forced that was the worst one of all of the uh celebrity cameo things because it was so forced because they took they took actual clips of LBJ and you know they sort of shoehorned in Forrest mooning him and it just it just didn't work that scene really stuck out to me as this doesn't need to be in this movie like the him telling JFK that he has to pee didn't need to be in the movie no I, you're making you're making it look like people who have uh, a mental disability like where the force maybe a quick learning disability because I know a few of them that they don't have those impulse controls and they're just you can use them for a gag here and there. Like wanting to be funny if, you know, someone with a bit of a, a slow learning disability said that to a present, ha, 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 we're making fun. We're punching down instead of punching up when they could have punched up high, like could have had JFK kind of treat him kind of down. And then he comes out with this zinger and it just knocks the president out and knocks the president down a peg. This is also made in 1994, which to me is very... Um, not like, I don't know, you guys watch social media, but people literally make people famous because they're dis disabled. There's many people that are there and it's them making fun of them. And people uh, now, I don't know if you guys are into social media a lot where you're watching it. There are a lot of people that either they have neck disforms or whatever. And because people make fun of them, they got all these followers because of it, not because of the content they put out. And no, I know. I know there's the, the I would consider it probably the pity follow. And they 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 end up uh, as someone with a large uh, a large following retweets something about how this person's being bullied, and then their audience grows, and it's just a, a news cycle. And that it's literally just people make you know thinking that that's um, they're just using that as a comedic punch instead of um, right. And I think that this would be made that long ago, which is you know to me that's when I was born, so it's a long you know that's a long time ago to be having something along those lines where that may not have been done in that era. Um, I just think that it was very creative. Um, I also think that, so I, I want to say this before I forget, there was a lot of points, um, not a lot, I'll say two to three points where I thought was more emotional before the run, um, Michael, because uh, you were saying after the, I got to find where it was. Um, anytime, anytime, well, one, anytime <laughs> Forrest seen Jenny with another man and beat him down is 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 either would either be funny to me or emotional to me. Cause uh, like the first one was like, man, she's really just, he's going to her college. She's in the rain. He's waiting for, he really loves this girl and she is getting pounded by another dude. You know what I'm saying? So that's. Wow. Uh, Went from romance to slut. Uh, slutty real quick there. How the movie happened. Right. And so, and then he, you know, you know, he goes into her college room after beating up this dude and feels on his, her boob and, 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 finishes within seconds you know that's that's something where you're like okay that's that's weird but then you go later where he's beating up people just because they're trying to grab her or they hit her and it always ex escalated just a little bit more to where it was like every time she would leave you're like oh well, here goes four is getting hurt again um the the part i was going to bring up that was emotional for me one uh While while you're looking that up, I'm just gonna say um, I, that I didn't appreciate because th that felt like that felt like a very like oh he has to protect this woman. She keeps telling him no, and the one scene where he where that guy like slaps her, yeah, like that's when he should have been beating these guys up. But up until then. It just it it just came off as just uh, again it it came off as poking fun at this guy's disability, um, and it it didn't play right for me. Um, if if that one guy that hit her would have been the one that he protected her against, I think that would have been more effective. Uh, 
I get that because I, I think it was a little part of him not understanding social cues of when, what, and where to do things. Um, but it was also like the idea of like she tried to protect him when they were young by running. And then they, you know, the whole dad thing, they prayed. And then he stepped in when the one guy was on her. It was like, it was like she, he knew what was happening. And so he was just trying to protect her from all men. So, I mean, I like that because I've always been someone like that. No, I would have just beat up dudes for no reason. But for Forrest, who who was known as the kid who ran from everything, to step in to protect the person that he cared about, I mm-hmm. felt that was a character development of, like, he's doing something. Like, oh, man, he's beating up dudes for touching Jenny. So I yeah, thought that was it, a good Yeah, if he would have done that once, that would have been a good character development. <laughs> But but him doing it those other times where it was unnecessary. He's a bully. Yeah, that that whole scene where she's singing the song in the strip club, unnecessary. The whole scene was unnecessary. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could. It was. I think it was more of the him saying bye is the only thing. Him saying that he's going to Vietnam is the only thing that mattered in that. Um, I, I I agree, and that could have been done pretty much anywhere that he would have found her. So I'm, I'm not trying to rewrite this movie again. This is this is your you know this is your movie, and I'm trying to sort of defend it a little bit because I I get it. Um. I'm not I'm not trying to like back you into a corner here. I'm I'm trying to as much as I can be on your side. Uh really- I'm not I want to destroy this movie. I you. No, I'm kidding. Uh this I did enjoy this movie when it came out. When I first saw it, I did enjoy it. When there's more people and I have a chance at your movie and uh when I get a laugh, it works. So I will fuck up your whole movie. Uh, <laughs> Okay, first of all, one, I thought it was funny that he became an Alabama football player off of just running. I find that funny because Alabama is one of the most prestigious colleges. So for him to just become an Alabama college football player is, to me, funny. And then he became an All-American, which is one of the hardest things to do in college football. And then on that, at the end, when he got when he graduated, it said he played five years of college football, which you can only be eligible for four years, which is also funny to me. Those things were funny. For me, you guys don't yeah, find don't <laughs> in in little things, obviously. Um, then so meeting Bubba, he when they were on the bus, it was like all over again when he met Jenny. The whole you could sit here. So I thought that was a very uh, emotional moment for me because you'd only find certain people that are your best good friends. You know, what I'm so talking you'll about? Have to sit beside you on a bus. Yeah, I can understand that. I can feel that. Um. And then when Forrest uh, saves five people, four people, one died, obviously. Bubba died. That That's that's a, a heroic moment. That's a very serious moment. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how are you going to pronounce that name, Chris? <laughs> Forrest Gump. <laughs> um, but no, I don't know. I, I, I did like enjoy I. I do like this movie a lot, and there's a lot of moments. I think that it's just, I think we get stuck with um, how long it is and that there's so much going on that we we don't really enjoy it. Because this is, and I'll say what Mike said at the beginning, uh, <laughs> it is a movie that's better watched in chunks. Yeah. If you if you have to fold laundry and it's 30 minutes, you can sit down and watch Forrest Gump for 30 minutes. That 30 minutes is going to be a little bit entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. If I would have watched this in thirds i would have had a much higher opinion of this movie um it's a good like it's on tv so i'm watching you know wherever it starts i can see that as well but again to sit down and watch the entire movie was it was a tough ask but fortunately when when the emotional payoffs happen they they i think they worked more after i watched the entire movie because because of how little character growth he had up until the last 45 minutes and then when he does have even a little bit of character growth it's like oh and then lieutenant dan pays off because he's 
you know, at Forrest's wedding, he has his legs back. Um, you know, Jenny pays off, even yeah. though. Well, I, I have to just interrupt. In the book, seconds. Forrest was a yeah. WWF champ. I read that, and I was about to wait for you to pause, Michael. And I was going to yell at the producer, Dylan, to bring that up. But if that was in the book, if, if they put that part from the book into the movie, I would have lost it because I would have been like, okay, no, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> no, there, this is too much. This is like, yeah, I know David Arquette is in the wrestling world and stuff like that, but still, this is, that would have been just too much. The comedic charm behind it. I, you know, I was so that's what made me mad. Honestly, you guys, uh, we came into this really hot. I had a joke for all this. I was gonna say, uh, <laughs> the movie starts in the beginning where Forrest created the heavens and the earth <laughs> <laughs> because in, in this movie, he does do a lot of things, and I find that that's the comedic tone. I mean, he was an all American football player, all American ping pong champion, he won the Medal of Honor, he saved four men, he. <laughs> He uh, uh, what else was it? He he was uh, played for Alabama, which is big. Then he owned a billionaire shrimp business. Yeah, owned own a shrimp company and then invested in Apple with that money, uh, <laughs> and then took a job for free uh, to mow grass. Uh, I mean, it's just so much things that that went through this movie, and I understand you might not see him as character arcs for his character, but I thought what I liked about the movie was that he didn't have a character arc. Was that he was one tone, and all the characters around him were so up and down, and had these amazing anti-war icon. Yeah, exactly. And he and Jenny went from up to where it was just this crazy art to where she came down, where she became a mother, and you know just wanted to live life. And same with Lieutenant Dan, where he was, you know, got married and had his legs, and even on the shrimp boat he had changed completely. So he ran. Uh, I believe it was he ran across. Cross, uh before uh the hobbit he ran coast to coast yeah three years he that, uh, nice, yes that as well yeah nice. it, it, yeah uh, and uh, again um these these interesting characters that are around forest I did. I I just wanted to know more about Jenny. I wanted to know more about Lieutenant Dan because we do get snippets of what they're going through, but what they're going through was so interesting, and the stuff that Forrest was going through, even though it was like high profile stuff, it wasn't very interesting, just because of of his character. And if they would have showed these interesting characters even a little bit more mm -hmm. even the even the two and a half hour running time wouldn't have been a problem because we would have been drawing more from different people's experiences i want to know more about these these characters who are going through stuff because forrest is never really going through anything even when bubba dies he's like Oh, that sucks. I guess I'm going to, you know, send his family a bunch of money. Very nice. Nobody's ever going to say that Forrest Gump is not a nice character, you know, who does good things for people. That's not what I'm looking for in a movie. I want to see the interesting stuff, not the not the stuff that's going on while the interesting stuff is going on in the background. I don't, I, you know what? But that's also I thought that was cool because I don't know if you watch if you see I've seen the movie a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background of every scene. So if you watch the you know you you see when uh, when he's explaining Bubba's mom, then it was grandma. The background in the window is changing to where you can see that they were in slavery. You know what I'm saying? There's different things in in little window parts or um, little things like same with the um I mean uh, where was he um when President Nixon gave him his uh, newer hotel room and there was the thing going on with the flesh. It's not needed because I it, it's not, I get it. But <laughs> much like you're like, oh man, there's so much little thing going on, which also is telling you that it's not all about us. Like individually, there's so much stuff going on around the world that we just don't know about that. You could walk down a street and someone got robbed in that street the same time you were walking down it and you don't know because it didn't affect you at all. There's mm -hmm. so many things that I just thought was beautiful, especially at, for this to be a 27-year-old movie. Um, 
with that being said, I also say to Michael, if if you thought the characters were so interesting, for you, I will write a TV series and every episode be individual characters from Forrest Gump. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'd love I, to see it. I want I want a whole season about about Jenny's life. I want an entire season about Lieutenant Dan. Not not before the war. I don't care about that. I want what happened to Lieutenant Dan after he lost his legs. Because that is an entire arc that we got in four different scenes that he was in after that. That is an interesting character. Because he goes from wanting to die and then he's miserable. And then he and then the scene with the hookers in the bar, he's like, you know, then you see that he does care about Forrest when when he kicks them out. Um, and then he he joins, you know, he says, if you own a shrimp boat, I'll be your first mate. And then he comes back like that's an entire arc for a character. And we got him for like 20 minutes of this movie. That's what I want to see. I do want to see an entire. And I do want to see uh, uh, what Bubba went through before he got drafted into the war as well. Hmm. I think that would be very interesting. No, I, I, I do agree. The only thing I'll say is, though, is if you flip the boat, right? If you flip and put this movie was not called Forrest Gump and it was called Lieutenant Dan, right? And Forrest Gump was the character that Lieutenant Dan was supposed to be, where it was just a character that was there that was a slow character that kind of was dumb. People would be like, ah, you know, that's kind of, they. why did they have him? You know what I'm saying? So are you, like, you would kind of make be mad at the movie for having a character like that, or you would say, what's up with that character? You would either want to know more, or you would think that they're making fun of him. So Yeah, there's, there's definitely a balance in this movie that they would have had to have struck to make it like perfectly balanced because as it is now um, it's too much forest, not enough interesting characters, but it you're also right in that if forest was a background character, they would need the perfect amount of forest to make him not. Yeah. Like a character that it, they could have easily made, Forrest a character that they were making fun of and yeah. that wouldn't have been good either now I'll say so I, I get you know I, I we argued on this because that makes the episode interesting first off <laughs> um, I understand that this movie isn't for everybody I think it's a great movie because I grew up on it and I just anytime it's on I'll throw it on because I can watch it anytime um, but I do think this is a movie that everyone should at least watch once I don't think oh, it's yeah, for sure for sure watch uh, real quick fun facts I know we're running out of, out of time um, the writer of this movie actually wanted John Goodman. That's who he's seen as Forrest Gump. Did you guys know? Wow. That, um, that would have been a fully different movie. He didn't want this. He didn't really see him as um, the way Tom Hanks played him. He's seen him more of an edgy character more than the way they've played him as like more of a goofy or, you know what I'm saying, like that. Um, also, also, Three per people that were almost the movie uh, instead of Tom Hanks was John Travolta, Ugh. <laughs> Bill Murray, and Chevy Chase. Whoa! Wow! No! 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 They were all considered for the part. Forrest Gump better than Shawshank? I'm gonna have to seriously disagree with that one. Ah, Shawshank you know may be a perfect movie. <laughs> a great movie i don't know if i i, I have them i would have uh, I, I don't i can't i would say equal i put the equal side yeah it's a tough it. one to i'm uh, and we're not going to get into it now because let's 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 announce what we're doing who won the oscar and did you hush uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about what's coming up Friday and next Monday, and then do our goodbyes because I think we'll go down a rabbit hole of discussion. Uh, so Friday, thanks for watching this episode. If you did watch yes. it, uh, make sure you follow us all when we give you your things. Make sure you keep watching episodes. If you want to keep watching episodes, Friday mm -hmm. is Mulan, uh, 2019's Disney Plus. Um, I might tune in for that. I never want to see that movie, but I'll watch it for this. Um, <laughs> Uh, just because they they took out my favorite characters, there's no point to make it. 
uh, whatever. Monday is Collateral Beauty, which is Chris, me, my number <laughs> favorite movie. Um, it's amazing. It has Will Smith in it. It is an amazing movie. Uh, have you guys seen it? Mm -mm. Uh, I'm really excited. I haven't seen it in a while. I'm really excited. I've never even heard of it. It's Will Smith's best movie. I will say that. Okay. Right. Well, I I like Will Smith in just about everything I've ever seen him in. So, um, and I'm cool with uh, uh, hosting next week too because I'm available. Uh, so make sure you tune in Friday for Mulan, Monday for Collateral Beauty. Amazing movie. Um, uh, real quick, we got the last couple things. Last uh, words on Forrest Gump, Mike. Yeah, I agree. This movie should be seen. Everybody should see this movie. Um, it's a movie best watched in segments. Um, there is some very effective stuff going on. Um, I could probably cut it down to an hour 50 and, and make it a drama drama. And yeah. I would have enjoyed it more. Um but that's my personal taste. I can definitely see this movie being in people's top three, four, five movies of all time. Um, all the acting is great. Sally Field is great. Uh, Tom Hanks is great. Everybody who's in it is doing a great job. There's just there's just a lot of extra fluff that I didn't need personally. Um, again, I. I don't want to, I'm not going to tear this movie apart because I, I can definitely see this like being somebody's, I'm going to give this a 6.5. Give it real, real quick. Give me one second, guys. Oh, no, Chris, <laughs> we can't, I think it's because of Phil's. Yeah. Okay. All right, so real quick, uh, we, we tear down things for everything that we've done, uh, but this movie, you're, we haven't tore down any of the acting or anything like that, directing and all that. It was literally just a storyline. So I think yeah. you give this a 7 rather than a 6.5 in my opinion. <laughs> kind of I was going to give it a 6. I actually bumped it up half. So I'm not going to go all the way to a 7, but I will go to a 6 and a half. Last words? You know what? The... The story is the only thing I really had a problem with. Like thinking back, the acting, Tom Hanks was amazing. Uh, Sally Fields amazing. You know, Den and Dan and all. everybody who was in this movie, the acting was on par. It was perfectly cast. Like I couldn't see anybody else. Like you, Chris, you pointed out who other actors who uh, Bill Murray and uh, John Goodman being them. I just can't see it because of how iconic this has become. Part of. Tom Hanks. So like there was nothing wrong with the acting. It was for me, it was more the story was the problem. And that's what brought it down. But I originally had it at four reels thinking about that's really harsh for the actors and actresses because they didn't do anything wrong. It was with what they did. So I'm going to bump it up to six. I, I'm going to be, I'm going to give it two reels. Holy shit. I'm re <laughs> giving reels. It's that's amazing. Chris, I actually changed my mind, but I'm, I'll give it more to Michael, my arch ne nemesis. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, six. The acting is like amazing. It's Tom Hanks at his hottest. You know, you're gonna enjoy the acting. If you like Tom Hanks movie, you're gonna love this. Wait, but... I didn't get reels yet, Dylan. Uh, <laughs> uh, my reels for this is um, a nine. This is my number th uh, four favorite movie. It's actually one of my top three favorite movies, but I knew you guys hate it, so I put it at four. Um, this is a nine to me. This is it's funny. It's dramatic. It has moments in it. It's it's iconic actors, um, and it's something that I can watch anytime I want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that Dylan, what's what's the math on that? You said it's what? So what's the total reels? Six point nine. Nice. Six point nine. Nice. That's good. I did a good job. I'll take that. It should be higher. It should be a seven point two. <laughs> All right, guys. That is the real boys. Uh, go ahead, uh, Michael. Uh, count us out of uh, what you uh, where we can catch you uh, no time to binge Jack Billings presents uh, I love this terrible game and the one that I'm sort of pushing right now is a new show that I have with my kid which is called Generation Clash it's a music show where we my kid is 18 I'm 
significantly older than that um, were listening to each other's music and uh, trying to get each other to like the bands that we like. And I think it's a really good show. Um, the first episode is out. Uh, episodes are going to come out every other Thursday. Um, but I think you should definitely listen to that because with just me and my kid, uh, it's it's a lot more emotional than and and also like casual good stories about the 90s punk scene. Um, so I think it's a very fun show. So I think everyone should check that out. And that's it. All Bye. Right. Mike. All right, Phil, um, talk about it yourself. <laughs> talk about myself. Thank you. I am Phil Better, the host of Investment in Yourself, the digital entrepreneur podcast, the Phil Better Show, Better Pain a Wrestling Podcast, Stock Dirty to Me, an investment for beginners podcast, as well as a host of other podcasts coming in the pipeline. Um, I produce podcasts. So if you want to learn about podcasting, follow me on at uh, on Instagram at podcaster feel better. I'll uh, help you learn how to monetize, grow your podcast and all that fun stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I'm the uh, podcast mogul. Chris, back to you. Right. Bye. Bill. Hey, I'm Chris Harvey and you were watching Disney Channel. Um, <laughs> make sure you guys check out the Chris plus Chris show. We had, we dropped five episodes, um, for the first season and, um, we're going to drop five more eventually. Um, but I'm a very busy person. Make sure you check out me on Instagram, Chris Harvey comedy, TikTok, Chris Harvey comedy, Facebook, Chris Harvey comedy. <laughs> the real boys is not affiliated with Disney channel, but, uh, make sure you guys check out the real boys on all, uh, platforms, YouTube, follow us, subscribe. I'm Chris Harvey. You guys have a great night. Make sure you guys check out Mulan on Friday. <laughs>